Exzellenzen, meine Damen und Herren. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and Federal President, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the Federal Government and expressly on behalf of uh, Foreign Minister Vestavella, I would like to welcome you to the Berlin Foreign Policy Forum and I would like to congratulate you on what you've created in a few years. Mr. Wehmer, Mr. Paulson, together with your team and the planning uh, team of the Foreign Office, over a few years you have set up, uh, let's say, a landmark uh, conference and that is an held at an exciting point in the year, maybe a bit different to other times of conferences, to take stock of the year and to look into the next year. And that is a point just uh, to reflect uh, before Christmas. But foreign policy will never have a break. It always is a challenge. Uh, it challenges us always, as Mr. Wehmer just said, as Germans, as the Federal Republic of Germany, and we're, as Germans, uh, and I experience that time and again in politics, still uh, we uh, have not got the real impression how the German looks, uh, the, the world looks in Germany, and we have to see, do we live up to our responsibility or not? Ladies and gentlemen, the third Berlin Foreign Policy Forum is being held uh, in interesting times in Vilna in two d uh, days. The European Union is going to uh, meet with the Eastern Partnership uh, uh, countries. And Kabul, the Leo Jirga, has got important decisions about our commitment in Afghanistan uh, since uh, after tw 2014. And Geneva, at the weekend, the 3 plus 3. Uh, negotiated with Iran an agreement on the uh, nuclear program that is a significant turning point after nearly 10 years of uh, difficult negotiations. I'm happy, very happy myself. I'm looking forward to that panel because in the planning you didn't know how up-to-date and uh, it is, how current this uh, topic is. I'm looking forward to this uh, exciting panel very much uh, right after this opening. So with all the subjects I mentioned, Vilna, Eastern Partnership, Afghanistan, Lajerga, and also Iran, Germany has an important uh, role to play in the negotiations. We take over responsibility. This is expected from us, and we have to discuss about this and where people might expect more from us. So, uh, and that's why the timing of the forum is so interesting, because it's in the middle of the negotiations of the Grand Coalition. That's been mentioned already. So it's not just the Germans who look uh, uh, to these negotiations in Europe and the world. Uh, the uh, coalition is expected uh, with bated breath to see what's the responsibility that's taken over, what's going to change. So uh, when you ask about the Europe's role in the world, and this is not just about the German role, but um, they're also uh, going to discuss uh, the actions of the European Union and without going back to the mistake to be inward looking as the Europeans which we did too, too much during the crisis I just want to say a couple of words up front about Europe as the, the status of uh, the crisis especially with a view that our uh, guests from um, overseas uh, want to hear quite rightly so how we identify our location in overcoming the uh, crisis which is also the starting point for further activities in the world so as Europeans at the beginning of uh, the debt crisis uh, we underestimated a lot and uh, and we've learned over the crisis so at any point in time the federal government's clear about the fact that uh, the maintenance and the further development of European integration is of supreme interest also for the Germans and I say also the cohesion of the Eurozone as a whole. So today we can see that the reforms and the instruments uh, like the ESM, the Fiscal uh, Pact and, uh, for Employment and uh, the Banking Union, um, this is the fourth element, these reforms are starting to work. So there's a clear indication for a successful turnaround in the economy and we know still that we're, we've not actually reached a climax yet and there's uh, severe criticisms about the trade um, balance uh, surplus. A criticism we don't share but we do take seriously and we know that uh, maybe we should communicate better, communicate and understand better why there was this criticism and why we think it's unjustified. What is decisive is the European economy is moving into the growth zone step by step and the ambitious efforts by our neighboring states, especially the program states, do deserve our enormous respect. 
and especially in Germany, often uh, we don't know much what the enormous efforts are undertaken in Greece, Spain, Portugal, and not in the non-program countries as uh, France and Italy. So where uh, these efforts are tough, they are a big burden on the population, but that's why they deserve our respect and no patronization. So, Youth unemployment, that is uh, something that uh, will uh, we will be dealing uh, with in the next year, apart from the European elections. So we've got immediate action uh, programs uh, to deal with the youth unemployment by 2016 to get the young people from the streets into jobs. So this and the European elections, those are the big European uh, policy uh, subjects next year. So the world politics um, issues are uh, uh, what we're going to discuss in a minute. But uh, f uh, f completing some uh, the Europe, uh, I want to say something about the European elections. The European elections confront us with a situation that um, now we are facing the situation that the opponents of Europe are coordinating very closely populist, nationalists of any shades, uh, France, the Netherlands, uh, and you might remember um, Get Wilders uh, meeting with Marie Le Pen and Den Haag, they are rallying their forces to fight against this Europe. So we as Democrats, uh, as uh, Democrats, regardless of uh, their party affiliation, we should said, uh, uh, send out a clear no and um, say yes to euro integration and the euro currency. And if you uh, leave ground the uh, populists, you will always come too late. So we have to be self-confident in these European elections. And we can explain what we're doing in the European politics. I think, and I'm convinced that we can explain this, and we can explain it also to critical general public. And this is the sense of democracy, that those voted will explain policy to their voters and uh, own up to it. Ladies and gentlemen, so uh, going beyond Europe, there's many, very many issues uh, that are up uh, next year. I just want to mention one thing that uh, if I saw it quite rightly in the program, it's not in the seminar program yet, but uh, we will deal with uh, very much in the next 10 years and we're at the beginning of the decade of the United Nations uh, for sustained development. So sustained, uh, sustainable development goals uh, that we are developing at the moment. So and I think it's uh, one of the import most important tasks of European uh, po uh, foreign policy, the sustainable development goals, to so develop them together in such a way amongst all players uh, so that it's not just a task of the G20, but it goes far beyond that. Uh, that these goals are sustained and supported um, and this will be a decisive step from the, of the United Nations and many don't understand how important and significant this process of the United Nations is we would and we as Germany are prepared to support uh, this process and to take over responsibility for this process and we would, uh, would like to see that this is the most important and most successful project of the United Nations it's a chance to uh, implement uh, prov poverty environmental and politics uh, goals into one target, including the security policy for global governance. And there's another important point, and it's been mentioned, and that uh, plays a role in the program. So the issue of how do we deal uh, with the activities of the NSA, and how do we handle this? And another point of the federal government is the initiative that we started a couple of weeks ago, together with Brazil, in the United Nations uh, for the protection of the uh, private sphere. So together with uh, Brazil, we initiated an uh, initiative and uh, we are going to discuss it in the General Assembly and uh, we have uh, got a lot of support for that. Uh, how to deal with a complex issue of data protection, private sphere, data sovereignty, how that is to be handled internationally and how it can be protected by international law. That's an important point and that is of course an uncomfortable point, but something our general public is expecting us to discuss. And thank you once more to Brazil and all those who supported this resolution of Bread Day. Now, and uh, we will continue to uh, fight for this in the next legislative period and with the next federal government. And that's what I would be convinced of. Ladies and gentlemen, so the weights in the uh, world are shifting. So we as Europeans uh, can actually only uh, claim our uh, values of freedom 
and uh, we can only uh, implement that in uh, a world of change. But we need European integration, and we also have to uh, admit more European diplomacy. So European diplomacy together with high representatives, uh, we saw that in the West Balkans this year, where there was positive developments, positive developments in implementing the agreement between Serbia and Kosovo, and this was not just implemented, including the elections, but we're probably, I'll say probably, in this, we are in a situation that uh, next year we will really uh, open up negotiations with Serbia. So also Ron, we've seen what European diplomacy, what the high representatives uh, can uh, do. So this is success one should also uh, mention. So building uh, the European Foreign Service is not just uh, at the moment important, but it is a worldwide uh, quite unique effort. This is a process like step by step over many years, states of the European Union can together build a foreign service. Um, so, of course, there will be problems, there will be bumps in the road, but um, it's important and decisive so that uh, we uh, use the review of uh, this uh, process to improve the EAD. So, uh, in Vilnius, the day after tomorrow, there's a summit of EU together with the uh, states of the European uh, Eastern Partnership. So, the EU, and we feel that, is, uh, has got a great attraction for these uh, societies of the Eastern Partnership. So preparation for this uh, summit and the decision of the Ukraine have shown that this is a long and difficult process ahead. So the EU has uh, offered the Ukraine a far-reaching, I would say a very far-reaching and well-communicated uh, also to all the other neighbours, including Russia, a well-communicated offer to, of close political and economic cooperation and this offer of a true partnership is still up and our interest in good relations with the Ukraine is uh, just the same and is maintained and it uh, of course means that Kiev needs to be convinced that they want to take a European path. We would wish a Ukraine which shares our values and which uh, then goes along the route to more prosperity and freedom in a process that is uh, aimed at nobody and it's uh, otherwise it would be a zero-sum game because at the time of the zero-sum uh, games is over. It's In this partnership it's more value for everyone, for everyone I would like to stress. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude and uh, I would like to say that you, just like me, we're looking forward to the panel uh, coming up now in many other areas, which I could also mention. The uh, Middle East process is not mentioned so uh, far, um, but there's other areas like China and uh, also the development of uh, issues of uh, s safety in the Pacific region. We've got many reasons uh, to uh, have a discussion, a broad discussion at the Berlin Foreign Policy Forum. So in all these issues, I would like to ask you one thing, and that is also representing the many uh, deputies of uh, the German Parliament here, which uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to welcome. Um, so German foreign policy has always got something to do with the fact that um, we're prepared to legitimize uh, our activities in, for, to our general public for nearly all issues of foreign policy, especially when it's about the euro guarantees of the, and uh, international missions of the uh, army, we need the agreement of the parliament. It's not a very important aspect of uh, democracy, and uh, that was uh, laid down in the constitution, and so this actually uh, strengthens the legitimization of foreign policy, and uh, so this is the process of legitimization. It takes time. It takes time, and it also, um, Res uh, requires courage for an open and public debate and that's one of the reasons why we in some of our decisions will take more time than others but not because uh, we uh, uh, want to uh, st uh, withdraw or uh, not uh, take part but because this taking on board the population as well as uh, the agreement by the parliament is very important to generate agreement of foreign policy through the closed cycles and beyond the closed cycles of foreign policy. So that's a very important uh, route, and uh, this is our concern. And we are the ones who actually uh, conduct and accompany foreign policy professionally. That's an important way of, Im uh, of communicating foreign policy goals publicly, and uh, especially in the uh, year of election, uh, the European Parliament is so decisive to get the agreement for the democratic parties. So it is in this spirit that I would like to wish you uh, an exciting forum 
And uh, with a lot of discussions, maybe in the breakout sessions and on the margins and uh, going far beyond the issues on the program, and I would like to thank the Kerber Foundation once more for everything uh, they triggered uh, these three years, and I think uh, the project is going to be continued, no doubt, and that's why, uh, together with you, I would like to wish you a successful Berlin Foreign Policy Forum. Thank you very much.